Hello. Hello. Good to see you, Elijah. Good to see you. Uh, good to see the ground crew on the floor. Nice. <laughs> so tell me, what is transpiring in your world since we last spoke? Um, definitely been building uh, a few spaces in uh, Unity for people to start engaging, trying out a few new technologies of exchanging resources in the virtual reality world and then kind of combining uh, the art and design of these levels with the tech of um, resource sharing through the virtual environment. So that's been pretty exciting recently. Wow, that's huge. That's yeah. The, that's the, the key to the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, kind of just getting that base technology put in and then slowly starting to fill in the the feel of it and the storytelling aspects on top of that. So it's starting to really come together. So how many hours a week do you put into this project? Don't know, I wouldn't really be able to count. It's just something that I do <clears throat> constantly all the time. So it's like over 60, not under 20. Yeah, definitely all the time, you know. I, I fall asleep writing things down and creating things and wake up with inspirations and just start putting them in, so pretty constant. So how about, are you in some sort of eco village? Are you? Uh... Or I'm in a community right now in Austin, an art um, collective called Indra's The Warehouse. And so there's a small community of us living here in Austin, Texas. So, so you, you don't have normal gardening duties or watering duties or animal duties or, or sort of like you're able to put all your time into your, into your vision? Yeah, I've got some gardens here that I take care of and Kind of manage, but it's not like a full-on farm, you know, where it's going to take all of my time. So I got kind of... you. I got you. So I, I asked you a question in Facebook. I don't know if you like Facebook as a communication modality, but sometimes I like it for in-betweens. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people are sort of leaving that. But I, I asked you a question: if you had a way to distinguish worldviews, mm. distinguish worldviews. Yeah, uh, do you mind going into that a little deeper, what you mean by that? Well, I mean, a worldview to me is like the subset of the paradigm. Like there's the, the fear paradigm, love paradigm, paradigms, the larger sort of species level thinking container. And then you break down by worldview and whether it's Christian or usually religions are used as the, the larger container, like whether you're Christian or you're Muslim, or you're Jewish. But there's also other ones that are in there that are sort of new maybe something like transhumanist, but it's, it's just like a sort of a, a, the largest grouping of humans that humans can identify within that to me are all either competing or cooperating at a larger collective level outside of national boundaries, so to speak. Yes. So I would say the worldviews for this game that we're all building is very based in um, solar punk world, solar punk worldview. So that is kind of, you know, post uh, cyberpunk, kind of when all of that, all the technology is kind of like ran its course of working in the old paradigm and starts to really corrupt and destroy a civilization, that there are a group of people uh, that are like the antibodies or the, like the white blood cells that are starting to take this technology and then reintroduce it into harmonious, more deep ecology philosophies and mindsets. So I would say the main worldview would be like collectiveness. Um, yeah, a real regenerative culture that is kind of a, this fantasy solar punk where it's pretty much the tech that we have now but being used in a collaborative way and it's a very beautiful image to paint it's one that uh, anyone any people can come to um, a lot of indigenous indigenous wisdom and applications of architecture art culture being involved in it it's a very beautiful diverse worldview that anybody can uh, be a part of it doesn't have to do with the religion or politics mm. more of just studying the ecology and you know inherent worth of all life and really seeing everything as a web that all depends on each other so that is the majority of the game um 
there is the attribute of the game of like, why would you want that? Why, what pushing you towards creating this world? And that kind of starts the character off in a very dystopian, just, just more similar to the reality we're in right now in a big city, feeling disconnected, feeling alone and kind of experiencing that for the first intro of the game and then slowly moving into these worlds where people are working in collaboration and abundance so that the player gets to feel the true contrast. And like, why would they keep playing this game? You know, like showing them that this is possible, that this is the future, this is kind of the mission of the game is to become more engulfed in this community of people who are co-creating. And as you move forward into your training, you get access to more and more uh, levels or worlds or groups people that are about this and it becomes more exciting there's also in part of the game where there's timelines that are encroaching on each other and there's the timeline of humanity coming together and working as a collective to move past a lot of our uh, trials and uh, challenges we have along with climate change and things like that and then there's the timeline of us imploding on ourselves and kind of becoming destructo you know, so it's like the two paradigms at their very peak, the love and the fear. And having those timelines kind of uh, blend into each other to where you can go into a town where the timeline, the physical timeline has like pierced through the center of the town, almost like a wave of uh, a portal or electricity. And if you step on one side of it, you're in the old paradigm. If you step on the other side, you're in the new paradigm. So players can have direct contrast in between the two worlds. And that gives the player challenges, ways to bring things they're learning in the new world and to build bridges into the old ones. So it then moves the timeline as they accomplish challenges and gains. It moves the timeline of hope for humanity and us being collective more so on the map. So more of the map is uh, covered by positive timelines the more work you do. Oh, wow. That's genius. Uh, would you call those decision points? Yeah. Definitely. Decision yes. point for bit, bridge building for decision points, you know, is kind of it. Well I, guess, like, I, well, I guess each would be a bit different, wouldn't it? Like, uh, I guess in those moments as a game designer or as the person who's going through the game, if I come up to a decision point where there's some sort of symbology, like what, what, what we did is we painted a red dot outside this, this space. And right on the sidewalk is a decision point. And then from there, you see the map of the territory. And this map is like, is painted onto parking spaces. So we had the unconscious, the conscious, and the superconscious. And then the unconscious is divided between seven paths. Path of suffering, path of awakening, path of healing, path of transformation, path of archetype, path of surrender, and then path of service. And then in the conscious one, you see five spaces, five communication spaces. So there's personal space, one-on-one -on -one space, group space, community space, and sacred space. Yes. And then in the super conscious parking spot, you have the time translator, which is that time thing that I sent to you, which is like the portal, uh -huh. the portal into the sort of outside of time and then looking at time in a, in a cyclical way. So from that decision point, you would decide on, do I want to go on an unconscious path, a conscious path, or a super conscious path? Huh. And then when you make that decision, then you have the sub breakdown of which path, which space, and then which time cycle. So if you put them all together, you might, you might be on the path of awakening in a one-on-one -on -one space for an hour. Or you could be on a path of suffering in a group space, let's say for a lifetime. Mm. Interesting. And that's that's the only. So do you have? Sorry. I was going to say, do you have all of this written out in software, or like no. how is this functioning? Acting. It's it's cons right now. There, these are just part of the conceptual maps of the inflow matrix. And this is, I have an, an ally down in Duncan who's very uh, supportive of the work and she allowed me to paint these maps in the front of her business uh, because she has a business called the Spinning Mini. It's more of a creative brainstorming place. It's, it's a, a dream space. It's, it's kind of like what, what you have with a bit of retail in the front. Uh -huh. And 
we painted these the kind of maps in the, in the parking spots and they're kind of linked into then being used as real spaces to have workshops or or like as soon as you like i call the cognitive landscapes as soon as you map out the territory with these maps then you can teach people how to move between them in a more physical way but if you're looking mentally or then you're looking at design and games where you have, you have different pathways or rooms or adventures that link to these because to me these these exist they exist but it's when you put them together that you formulate spaces that you really understand the context of yes i love it so what i have is a lot of these maps like this is the latest one that i think is linked into i think you activating something where you have oh, let me just switch this thing you can leave the ship. You're there. No, I'm about to go down to my <laughs> my fake human spaceport. And what you have here is my version of Barbara Marks Hubbard's uh, Wheels of Co-Creation. But if, if I just read them off to you, because they're sort of close, but it's science, economics, education, technology, Beautification, health, philanthropy, politics, governance, language, law, corporate media, history, biosphere, worldview, community media, justice, evolution, spirituality. So I'm taking the wheels of co-creation, adding a whole bunch kind of more, mm -hmm. and then, then going in four levels down where you're going from the community to the organizational, to the individual, and then inside the individual. And that's where you have the fun part of really going inside someone's consciousness or you start to look at the different worldviews because I think like, like looking at your, your timelines and cyberpunk, the aspects of let's say the, 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 what's affecting the timelines are the interactions between all these worldviews, the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews, you know, they've been fighting for thousands of years and they have this massive kind of momentum of stupidity whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think if you don't, if you're coming in your game and you're coming just within your worldview, you're not going to, you're, you're still going to be contained within it. It could be your ideal, but if you have a whole bunch of worldviews where your worldview is one of them, then you're going to gather the people that actually want to live that way together. And then to me in the game, you show which world you does better. Give them all the choices. You want to make a Christian world, you fine, bring in all your stuff. But realize that you are a worldview amongst other worldviews now. If your worldview cannot, you know, integrate or understand or listen or work with these other worldviews, you know, it's like body parts aren't working in it. Someone's body parts are gonna to have to go to get to a whole system where we can actually kind of get along. And, and part of this to me is bringing out the worldviews like Satanist worldview or Luciferian or whoever. And first to identify, have them there. And second is go, there's these different functions. What happens if you gave a worldview a function? Like give the Christians philanthropy and give the Gaians beautification and give uh, the transhumanist technology. Like, and there's good and bad, there's, there's right and wrong kind of things, but it's, it's kind of like you're, you're now actually mimicking reality better and you're bringing in a sort of a real game-like uh, way to bring the worldviews into more positive interaction with one another and, and have a methodology to show, you know, okay, you want to show us your best, show us your best. Um, yeah. But it's usually like the underlying wars and, and lifetimes of, of hating each other that, that is being carried in the real world but why not in this game bring in all the good stuff but just show under you know have people understand that there's different functions to this to our society there's different worldviews have different controls over different functions and mm -hmm. you know if the luciferians control our governance systems but want you to believe that the christians do you know that that's to me one of the bigger things on the planet right now you know there's a lot of deception and there's a lot of uh corruption so how, how do we deal with that in a way that's intelligent non-violent but still deal with it yeah 
I think that's huge. And my personal belief is I shared with you that once people are able to see all the options, they're able to see how different groups interact in these different areas, that I really feel like we're moving out of the paradigm of fear and we're moving into one of collaboration. And that, like you said, a lot of uh, organizations, uh, religions have functioned out of fear for a long time. And that usually leads into a leader of some type, a king, a ruler, and something like that. And they become the most rich and have the most resources and they pass that down to their family. And it becomes this kind of fear-based uh, control system. And I feel like just by providing without even having to uh, try to destroy or dismantle that, that if one is built, that is built in cooperation, that if all people are coming to this and putting in resources because they think it's a good idea and it's not ran through fear, but through love and through the radical inclusion, then more resources will be pooled and more people will want to join that because they will have access to the resources, not because they have to choose something you know, not because they feel like they have to rebel, but because it just seems easier. It's easier to get access to. It's funner. And mm -hmm. when something's funner and easier, which love already is, and cooperative-based platform already is, then it doesn't matter how, if you're like in power based of fear. People want to join because they want to have access to the abundance that you have. And sure. I really believe that that will naturally happen and that it's just going to happen faster when we games like this that allow people to view these different areas and see what it feels like being part of a group that based in how much can we share with each other. It'll just feel really good and they'll be like, wow, they'll just choose to keep interacting with that rather than trying to force someone or sell somebody on the idea. I agree. Uh, something synchronistically wise, uh, yesterday I, I was speaking with the LaCiel Foundation. I think I told you a bit about that. And they've got a real sort of pure vision and heart. They brought together 12 different spiritual elders after coming together, nine of them, to kind of come up with a spiritual quest for themselves. And then they brought together a symposium where the 144 different people came together on 13 different teams. Let me just read the teams out for you, okay, so you get an idea of it. Um, seeding global community, cleansing the Earth's biosphere, sacred sites and architecture, multi-dimensional perspectives and education, transportation, reforestation, financial systems, the sacred and reality, families and communities, the new energies, water, agriculture and permaculture, integral health, so, and uh, love and righteousness. So they have 13 teams that have been together for a couple of years and they're bringing together a few of us people to help facilitate maybe going to the next phase, whatever they, they feel they need to go. Wow. And at the end of the meeting, I sent them your promo and I, I was speaking about how you're bringing together, as you said, you know, the gene keys, the human design, my calendar, because we have an expert on our team, Dharmendra, I would like to introduce you to, who's, you know, understands the gene keys and human design better than anyone I've ever met. And I think if, you, if you're integrating that into your work, he's someone you really want to be working with. Yeah. Um, so I... I sent them, you know, I, I asked them to, for, for the, all of them to watch the promo video because I'm suggesting that, you know, whatever they're doing or we're doing, it needs to be more for kids and it needs to be more a game. And so I'm hoping that for them to look at, at your promo video and just the synchronization of you're the only two real groups, new groups that I'm speaking with. I'm, I'm deep into the recluse of my own work right now, but I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, you know, I need to keep connected to somebody. <laughs> And, and to me, it's like, you know, I've been waiting for the other pieces of the puzzle or the other people who've got what they've got because, you know, I, I know I've got a piece, but I think I've got the actual language connecting piece to connect everything together. I've been waiting for the technology to catch up to the idea that I've been working on for most of my life. Wow. That's amazing. I'm so excited for this to all come together. You're right. All the pieces are attracting each other. Mm. And not one person can really have the whole thing. And when multiple generations and multiple everything come together, you can really get a diverse, robust, merging, I think software, you know, software slash game slash movie slash web TV show. Um, so, yeah. So I'm, exactly. I'm, 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 I'm wondering if as a test group, 
because I know you've got whatever you do, you're going to have test groups that that uh, I could. And the one thing I can do, I mean, I can help in many ways, but to assist to get these test groups, because I'd like to create these shared knowledge communities that take 144 people and actually build a business commerce cell that becomes a, a, like a groundwork foundational cell to build a new paradigm. So I, I'd really like to see how to integrate what you're doing, what they're like everyone, like how do we, how do we bring it all together? And, uh, it just takes time, right? It takes getting to know each other and building some trust and getting it does. Accepted, right? Now, a big part of it for me is there is a lot of people building new systems and new languages. And a lot of it is of this like new dimension, new paradigm language. And I think that's exactly where we're going. And that's like the back door, you know, like it's good for us to write and to write these things and draw these things. And then we, I believe if we choose to be successful, that we choose to translate what we're building into a language and into an interaction that is easy for people who have never even thought of these things before, or else it's not digestible. Like if a you know, if an eight or 10 year old can't understand what we're talking about, then to me, it's pointless to try to build these, you know, because most of people are on a fifth grade reading level, the majority of the humans in this world. So if we really want to bring a lot of impact and we make this something that, you know, like conscious and super conscious and things like that are great. And that's, that's exactly what we're doing. So that's the back door. But then the front door is what makes this attractive to someone. Do they see like it as maybe a superpower or something that the collective, the mainstream mind can understand like, oh, okay, like I see mm -hmm. I'm up in this way. And then what we're doing is we are training through like, um, you know, through cultural norms of like, say it's something that's like fantasy related, like something that can be related to like a Lord of the Rings game mm -hmm. or a, what's it called? Game of Thrones kind of feel to it, to where it feels like their culture and not like they're trying to read some type of new age thing but just seems like a part of the game. And then in reality, it is bringing on the new paradigm through the most popular culture, which is things like Final Fantasy and these type of games that really intrigue the imagination. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's my yeah. perspective. No, I, I agree. I, like I think most software systems aren't designed as games and most games aren't designed really as business systems, but they need to come together in a game that is functionally like really fun to play. Like, um, there's so many, all the attention of humans right now are going to games online. I mean, it's, and it's, it's the young people, that's how all their uh, focus is. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I, I feel I have a very dull layer of sort of information architecture and sort of a new way of maybe infographing some things, but it's, it's, it's just a layer. And then on top of it needs to go this right symbology, right animation, and the right, you know, and the, the cool, the cool music and sound and story, and um, and I think you know you and many other people worked on again many different layers and seeing how it comes together, right? So it so it works in terms of integrating, I guess, the fun and the real commerce aspects that we need to live by to sort of go forward. I think. Yeah. Have you ever seen Avatar: The Last Airbender? Yeah. Yeah, I love their ability to like have fun silly animation lovable characters uh great storyline that's exciting and then to, they were like, able to weave so many teachings of like human interaction and you know justice and honesty and these things and to make really heart you know really heart touching experiences through that uh that cartoon was just so incredible to me you know and to be able to tap on things and keep the uh, that are real education and uh, really good for the body. You know, they go through the chakras, they go through the emotions and um, dealing with family and things like that. So it was just really awesome to me to see that, like, wow, because that's a super popular, mm -hmm. you know, cartoon. And so to be able to carry the excitement of like action and you know, like having enemies and stuff like that, and to bring in that real education was very impressive. Mm. So can I ask you then where, 
like where maybe your knowledge gaps or where where are you stuck or what what kind of things you need like other than I guess major funding or something but is there anything that has come up that um yeah we are looking for most all positions um we have developers we have artists we have storytellers we have things like that and we're looking for more you know more managers because we have the comic book that's coming out you know we have the um video game we have animated uh series that's getting worked on and so having different team members for all of that uh, as far as the systems go um we definitely need people for that um we're working with lyra which is just collecting a lot of data right now and collecting it from everything from like human archetypes to um, chakras, wheel of co-creation, things like that. And they're just putting it all in spreadsheet and data form so that these type of things can be um, implemented or shared when all of these games are ready to start intaking data. So I would love to connect you with them so that you can start sharing and allow for these different games because I'm seeing so many similar similarities in the things that you are creating, that I've created, that others, and, but then there's all these differences in them. So I'm seeing that they can all layer, there's different sacred geometries that can sit inside of each other. And then I'm kind of rearranging like, oh, that's health and wellness. So that goes in this corner with this person and kind of people are bringing in pillars of self uh, care and wellness. People are bringing in pillars of community development and really just getting these all put together. So they'd almost be like mods. So the game, that's being built will have command centers where you and a group of people who because of your uh, worldviews and your guilds and your passions uh, are aligned, you choose to sit in this uh, little arena together and then you can all pull up your projects or pull up your things, but they get pulled up, not just random floating things, but they will set into a holographic template. And so these, I see these systems being really important for these different mods. So like we could have a basic, like one of them is a business plan. Like you and a group of friends want to build a business. So you can pull up a template and it's like, boom, missions, values, um, product, audience, all those things are kind of floating in a certain spot. You and the team get to fill them out together. Um, that's pretty like basic, uh, you know, like still in this paradigm. And so we want to be able to have mods be able to come in and be like, well, this is one built for a conscious community. And these are where we set our values and then be able to, invite people in to share on those and have different templates that go from something basic to maybe starting a business with a group of friends to maybe putting on a concert or a festival the whole templates there for mm. food and electricity and artists and vendors all the way to building community that's the main goal is to allow people to build new communities and be able to input their technology or their skills or the people that align with their worldview to make it happen uh, so people to build out systems in these mods that then our team can convert into actual uh, virtual reality or into the game's uh, operating uh, templates. Mm. So yeah. we're looking for some more Unity developers. We're looking for people that are working with systems like that and definitely uh, looking for investors that have the right intentions. You know, there's quite a few people interested. They see this virtual learning and experience as a powerful tool. And we really want people, investors that are seeing it as a tool to really help humans rather than to make them money. You know, there's gonna be money made for sure, but we're really making sure that our investors are looking for <clears throat> uh, actual uh, improvement in communities and projects. Mm. Do you have a business model that you're using to run everything on? Nope. <laughs> Just doing it, you know? Because, mm. like, it basically, like, the Inflow Matrixes has a, a team building system, right? To, to but organize it more from the business point of view, but they can be custom designed to any business. And then the modules that would be used, you could just use them with you guys first and then have them, you know, once you guys know them, then you, you would know how to build them and all that. So it's, it's, it's a, again, it's sort of like a, a business generator to build a new paradigm. Yeah, I'm completely open to that and uh, into viewing businesses. I would love to be a nonprofit 
you know, and um, well, this this wouldn't even like this is like shared knowledge communities though. It, but the old paradigm structures we wouldn't even be using them. Yeah, I'm open to that. I really am. Um, I'm just open to what's best to allow everyone to collaborate in the most easy and effective way possible. So uh, we are looking for someone that can help manage and direct in that way totally. And, you know, I have like lists of the needs for the game. I have a list of, you know, artists and writers and voice actors, all these things. And I'm um, really choosing to bring in someone to help organize those people and kind of get things more set. So yeah, that sounds super exciting to me. Okay. Um, well, maybe we should both think a little bit more, um, and I'll I'll uh, I'll think a little bit more, and maybe we can see. Um, maybe you can see a role. I mean, generally, I'm an information architect, right? So I'm kind of looking at how everything connects together, um, which is always kind of big can be a big role and especially in something like what you're doing, right? Um, so I have to sort of balance working on my own tools and stuff that I have that I want to get into the market versus, you know, who I'm working with as allies and who I'm working with as customers, and who's on yeah. my team, so to speak, right? So, I mean, we're both in, in, in very similar situations, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we both need help. We both can give help, but I think we've got to figure out, you know, where the, the connection points are right so exactly okay so i think it's another good little short chat and um maybe next time uh it should be like i'd be down to doing a weekly call with you like this just as a sort of yep. way to, to sort of get things off the ground and get, get some momentum and if you bring some people next time or you know whatever intuition brings us to, to, to bring some of our people together maybe. Um, and if you have any sort of, uh, I like, I don't know about you, I, in Facebook sometimes we can pop things back and forth, right? Like a messenger, uh, um, if, if you feel like it. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I would love to, if you could put me together a brief thing, a brief uh, document about you and your interest in Civil X and some of the tools you've been creating, it can be very kind of basic. You know, you don't have to go into too much detail. If you want to put a lot of detail, I welcome that. And then I would love to show that to some main core team members and just start introducing you. So when you come into some of the jams or the meetings with us that they have a base background, you can share more in more detail with them as we meet. But I would love to kind of have that and then enter you into the team member document that I'm building so we can start to see what your list of skills are and just what you're most excited about and how that lines up with the project. Okay. That sounds good. Wonderful. Okay. Great speaking there. again. Yes. Uh, I, I guess as you see, I'm sort of, uh, I put these up, I stick in a place called the Very Secret Plan and you are now a potential ally coming into the Very Secret Plan. And my show is just all the different people I'm involved with to sort of bring this forward. So. Just so you know. Wonderful. I'm excited, man. <laughs> I appreciate okay. it. See you, my friend. Love, brother. Bye.